from Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Outing, starring Jack Haley. And now, here is your hostess, Loretta Young. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Outing, starring Jack Haley as Dave. Saturn was the mythological god of agriculture and vegetation. He also had a day named after him, and his reign was characterized by happiness and virtue. Now, regarding this particular Saturday and the David Lyons household, virtue taken for granted. Happiness, no special indication thus far. Rain, very proper. Wonderful breakfast, Ellen. I don't want to rush you, dear, but I'd like to finish the dishes. I have a million things to do. I'll rinse out my own cup and saucer and spoon, then you'll only have 999,997. Dave, crepe paper garlands simply aren't in a class with potted tulips, are they? Oh, I should say not. But I'm over the budget already with a five-piece orchestra instead of the three and the filet mignon instead of the fried chicken... Well, I've got to settle it in my own mind today. Honey, what are you talking about? Well, Dave, you haven't forgotten the spring dinner dance. If it's tonight, I have. I thought it was next Saturday. Well, of course it is, but this is my last chance to get the basic planning done. I'll have to spend all next week on details. That's the million things you have to do? A few little basic plans? Oh, why don't we load the kids in the car and go somewhere for a picnic? And let everyone say Esther Lewis was a better chairman than I am. Pop, you do your pet? He's too fat. Now, Bernie... Why should we hurt your brother's feelings? He's big for his age, but I wouldn't say he's fat. But he'll bust my pogo stick. Dear, you're interrupting your father and me. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. Uh, what are you talking about? Hmm? Oh, yes. Dave, you've had a good month, haven't you? Well, up until today. I mean financially. There was that fleet of panel trucks and the custom convertible you sold to Mrs. Van Ling. Oh, sure, I'm having a fine month. Why? Then it really wouldn't matter if I went over the budget and got the potted tulips, would it? We wouldn't have to tell anyone. I'm over my budget, too. Can I have 35 cents? What do you think, dear? Well, uh, can I, Pop? Just a second here. Uh, Ellen, it'd be silly to spend our own money just to get one up on Esther Lewis. Not necessarily. Come on, Pop. Tell him he's too fat to use my pogo stick. Oh. Go find out what the boys are arguing about, David. The least you can do on Saturday is keep them from quarreling. Okay, okay. Come on, Bernie. Wood roses would be lovely, but I suppose they'd be terribly expensive. Can I have the 35 cents, Pop? What for? Two pony rides at the Junior Amusement Park. It's a special. Oh, for... Uh, I thought you didn't like to ride. Well, I'm scared of grown horses, but if I could practice on a pony twice, maybe I wouldn't be. 482, 483, 484... See, he bounced it all the way down to the concrete. He'll bust it. Pat, what in the world are you trying to do? 488, 489... Think about what? How to make some money. 492, 490... Hey, Pat, you skipped 491. What? You skipped 491. I did not. Well, you didn't say it. Well, I said it to myself. Doggone you, Bernie. You tricked me into stopping when I was only 206 jumps away from a new record. Now I have to start all over. Not on my pogo stick. You don't have Jimmy yet. Bernie. You weren't using it. Pat. Make him stop, Pop. You'll bust it. Well, how can I figure out how to make money if I don't have something to occupy my mind while I'm thinking? Oh, you're too fat, you big overgrown ox. You sawed off little squirt out. Pat, Bernie, cut it out, both of you. What's the matter with everybody today? Well, there's nothing to do until this afternoon. There's something I could do this morning if I had 35 cents. All right, let's discuss one problem at a time. I know what you want the money for, Bernie. Sure, for two pony rides. You're afraid of horses. You're supposed to keep quiet, Pop said so. I said one at a time, and Pat first. Now, you find yourself in poor financial circumstances, hey, Pat? Well, if that means I'm broke, yeah. And there's a cool triple feature this afternoon. The Bride of the Thing, Revenge of the Werewolves, and Frankenstein Visits the Vassar Commencement. What happened to your Saturday job? I thought you were making money hand over fist. Oh, Mr. Harris ran out of Fieldstone. 
He can't go any further with the house until he can locate some more. And until he does, he won't hire me and Bill to sort him. That's reasonable. Oh, everything goes wrong. You might even say you're out of sorts, huh? Well, yeah. Can I have an advance on my allowance? For the bride of the thing? Definitely not. Gee, they all sounded good to me. Pat, why don't you and Bernie and your mother and I hop in the car and go out to Jane's Meadow for a real old-fashioned picnic? Oh, brother, what a flump idea. What? Flump. The opposite of flimp. Flimp means cool, Pop. Uh, can I have 70 cents for two rides and the triple feature? No. What do you say to a picnic, Bernie? Catch ourselves a couple of swell trout in the brook, build a fire and cook them right there. How does that sound? Terrible. <coughs> I never catch any fish. Well, so far you haven't, but when I teach you a little more about it... You never catch any either. It's gonna rain anyway, Pop. <laughs> I sure wish I knew how to make about 40 bucks. 40 bucks? For the movies? No, from nickel-plated headers for my car. What? You haven't got a car. Well, I will have in November when I'm 16. Where did you get that idea? Well, Mom said you'd buy me one. At least she said her and you would discuss it. If Pat can have a car, why can't I have 35 cents for two pony rides? Pat's not getting a car, and if you don't quit hopping on those ponies, you'll be in no condition to sit on them. What's getting into kids these days, anyway? Why, when I was your age... Mine or Bernie's? Uh, either of you, uh, b uh, both of you. Why, I would no more have thought to ask my father for money to spend on other nonsense Daddy, than I... Daddy, would you come in a second, please? You're both developing an utterly false sense of values. Yes, Ellen, I'll be glad to. What does he mean by that, Pat? Two rides for 35 cents is in a bargain, I guess. I'd like to ask your advice, dear. Uh, that'll be a pleasure after trying to straighten those two Indians out. Ellen, am I a complete failure as a father? Of course not. Why? I don't know. I wake up this morning feeling great. Then I talk to the boys for five minutes and I'm ready to be measured for a straight check. Why don't you go down and order yourself a new suit, dear? When I'm upset, I always feel better if I get a new hat or something. I'm not upset. It's just that they think money grows on a tree. The name of the tree being Dave Lyons. And wanted for the doggondest reasons. Werewolves, moth-eaten ponies, nickel-plated hot rods. City kids just don't have an appreciation for the real pleasures in life. Such as? Such as the clear blue sky, and hiking in a grassy meadow, and the zing of a line when a trout hits it, and the smell of spring flowers. Oh, the flowers were what I wanted your advice about, Dave. Now, wood roses will be more expensive than tulips, but as long as I'm going to make it up out of my own pocket anyway, why don't I just run down to the florist now and order them? Why in the world should you pay for the dinner dance decorations out of your own pocket? Or should I say, my own pocket? Honey, we went over it all at breakfast. I'm spending as much as we'll take in for the music and the food, maybe more. So I'll have to stand the decorations. Don't have decorations. They painted the club last fall. And have Esther Lewis and her friends whispering behind my back until they start knocking the chairman for next year's dance? Ellen, your sense of values could stand a little overhauling, too. And I know just the place to overhaul them. Jane's Meadows. <laughs> Oh, you won't be bored when we're hauling in those whoppers. Let's see now. Tackle box, lunch Can basket. Can I ask Woody Bowser to go along? That little... Why, sure, Bernie. Uh, go get him. The more, the merrier. Okay. It won't be so bad with two of us bored, maybe. I wish that kid could catch a fish for a change. Rods, grill, camp stools. Now your mattresses, Pop. Shall I blow them up? Uh, uh, not till we get there, Pat. There wouldn't be any room in the car for all of us. Uh, that's what I had in mind. I ought to stay home and figure out how to make some money. You're not going to mope around here while your mother and Bernie and I are out having the times of our lives and wait you taste the lunch I've packed. Well, I'm not very hungry. That'll be the day. Everything in the car, dear? Yeah, you bet, honey. You're going to have the most comfortable, restful day you've ever had. Umbrellas, raincoats, ponchos. Don't be silly, Ellen. It may be a little dark here, but look over toward the west. Yep, much darker. Oh, flump. Pat, I agree with you, flump. Hop in now, everybody. I'm missing a triple feature for this. Dave, I really should at least talk to the florist. Ah, oh, you just forget your chairman of the dinner dance for the rest of the day. You'll have lots of fresh ideas tomorrow. I only have to decide on the decorations. Oh, this is the way to spend a Saturday. Let the rest of the world fret and worry and stew, but not for the four lionses. One, two, three. Hey, where's Bernie? Oh, that's right. I, I, I told him he could take Woody along. Uh, well, <laughs> we'll have to go back for him. 
Well, he's standing in front of the Bolses, but I don't see Woody. Well, oh, that's the first break I've had today. Uh, what are you getting ready, son? Oh, he's not going. That's good. Uh, I, I mean, uh, that's too bad. Well, hop in. Come on, move over, Pat. You take up the whole back seat. Oh, you little squirt. You have to sit back here. Did Woody have other plans for the day, dear? No, he thinks picnics are boring. Flimp. Uh, did you tell him about the fish we're going to catch? Yeah. He says he'd rather ride the ponies. Well, he doesn't know what he's missing. We'll be out there in three shakes of a bear's tail, and in two more shakes, we'll have the campfire going. And in one more shake, it'll be washed out, and we'll all be drenched. And bears don't even have tails. Gee whiz, Pop. You know, I may give up the automobile business and become a weather forecaster. Don't push your luck, Dave. A weatherman knows that lightning never strikes twice in the same place. But I hit it right this time. Yes, you did. It's very nice out here. Yeah, I'm bored. When are we going to go fishing? In just a few minutes now, Bernie. As soon as I have a chance to catch up on the food department. Oh, let's go now. I've had enough. Well, I haven't. Are you going to eat that whole steak sandwich by yourself, Pop? The whole one? Pat, you've had three of them. And I thought you weren't hungry. Well, I wasn't in town. But coming out, I was thinking about football next fall, and gosh, I've got to be in condition. Well, okay, take it. I'll get by on potato chips and olives until we catch a few fish. More coffee, Ellen? Mm, please. I should have helped you pack the lunch. Men never know how much to take. I thought eight big steaks and eight big French rolls and a quarter potato salad and half a dozen tomatoes would be plenty. I didn't mean to criticize, dear. It's very good. And the pie will be thawed out in another hour or two. Maybe we can stop for hamburgers on the way back. Hmm? Mm, I may have to. I want to catch a fish, except I know I won't. Pat, why don't you take Bernie down to the brook and get started? I'll join you as soon as I get straightened up here and get your mother comfortable for a little nap. I don't want to fish with Pat. Well, I don't want to fish, period. I think I'll climb that hill a few times, start getting in condition. All right, go ahead. I said you could do anything you wanted when we got here. Maybe if I get some exercise, I'll think how to make some money, or at least get my appetite back. Ellen, uh... What are we going to do about that boy? My dear, he's just a normal 15-year-old. You should be proud that he's so big and strong and so interested in earning his own way in the world. What are you going to do about me? I'm only nine and I'm not interested in anything. I'm going to take you fishing right this minute. Grab the poles. Are you comfortable, Ellen? Oh, I'm fine, dear. If you want anything, call me. The brook's right at the bottom of that little gully. Hey, let's go, Pop. All right, son. Oh, this is a way to spend a Saturday, huh? No. So far. Oh, oh, quite a scramble down here. Oh, Dave. Hey, yes, dear. Could you come back here just a second? Yes, dear. Uh, you run along, get a line in the water, and I'll be right with you. What will I do if I catch a fish? Oh, look him straight in the eye until I get there. Doggone kid. Wonder if he knows enough to put a hook on the line and bait the hook. Uh, anything wrong, Ellen? Oh, no, except this mattress seems a little hard. Well, that's easy. We'll just let some air out. Uh, how's that? Well, that's much better. No, it's a little too soft now. All right. Uh, uh, I guess you'll have to stand while I blow it up. Well, oh, this is all right, I guess. Having a good time? Mm, it is peaceful. Dear, I've been noticing you today. You're really very clever at doing things, building fires, cooking, stringing fish poles... You know, things with your hands. Well, thank you. And I'll bet if I got a few dozen rolls of paper, you could twist together enough garlands of artificial wood roses in just three or four evenings. Uh... Pop! Pop! I'm looking him in the eye and he's looking right back! Uh, we'll talk about it later, Ellen. I, I don't want Bernie stared down by a brook trout. <laughs> You weren't afraid of him? Oh, gosh, no. He looked at me sad, and I looked back just as sad. Then for goodness sakes, Bernie, why did you throw him back? He was too small. Oh? How small? Oh, only about as long as from my hand to my elbow. Hey, he must have been better than a pound. What were you using for bait? Well, I didn't have any bait. The darn old hook ripped a button off my shirt, and it was still there when I threw the line in. Well, let's get a fly on your line and really go after this stream. If 12-inch brook trout will fall for a pearl button... Hey, with bait, you think I'll catch one big enough to keep? Keep everything from now on. There. Now just whip your line out easy like I showed you so the fly will float on the surface. Fly? Well, 
that's nothing but a few beat up old feathers. To a trout, it's the most appetizing thing in the world. Now toss it in and let me get my equipment rigged. Atta boy. You wasn't a very far cast. Well, for a nine year old, it was fine. Man, I've been itching to try this new spinning reel. Yeah, you got much nicer stuff than me. Well, I'm a more experienced fisherman. As soon as you show me you can handle my old bamboo rod, I'll hey, get I you. I got some! I got some! Now, don't jerk him, Benny! Play him easy! Well, here's how I got the first one out! Oh, Bernie, your confounded fish smacked me right in the face! Hey, don't let him dangle there, Pop! Take him off! I'll try to hold the thing still so I can grab him! There. Hey, is he big enough to keep? Is he ever? Son, you shouldn't just horse a trout out of the water. Quiet, you. Ouch. He Ooh. came out, didn't he? Hey, hurry up and get him off the hook, Pop, so I can catch another. I'm trying to. We'll just put him... Doggone, there's nothing to put him in. Well, didn't you bring the basket with the window on top? No, I forgot the creel. Uh, Bernie, you run up and get the, uh, get the lunch hamper. Well, you said you'd do all the work. Well, uh, sure, but uh, you've caught two fish already, and I haven't hey, even... Hey, boy, had... I got another one! He's, he, he's running away with your line. Use the reel. How? Show me how. I, I'm holding this darn fish. Put him in your pocket. Hurry. Oh, well, okay. Now, let me hit the pole. No, no use now. The line's caught in that branch. Well, the fish is still on. If I can reach it with my rod. Not, not quite. Pop, if you could edge your way out on that log. Uh, well, we'll try it. Oh, oh, slippery. Careful, Pop. I don't want to lose my fish. The fish isn't as important as... Hey, Oh. Hey, Pop, look hey. out! Oh, ow! Oh, where are you, Ellen? Right over here. Just keep going. Oh, yeah, but these doggone brambles are, are ripping me to shreds. Dave, I just wanted to show you... My goodness, you're so... You didn't leave Bernie swimming down there alone, did you? No, he's just fishing. Well, I know your old clothes will dry soon, but you should have brought your trunks if you planned to take a dip. I didn't exactly plan it. How'd you get in here without tearing yourself limb from limb? Well, there's a little path around the back way, but as long as you'd already started through the bushes... Ah, aren't you coming? Come down here if you want me, Pat. Now, what was it, dear? What? What'd you call me for? Oh, yes. Wouldn't the tables look nice if we pulled up a lot of these lovely vines and ran them down the centers? The tables might, but the people wouldn't. Ellen, that's poison oak. Poison oak? Certainly. Come on down to the brook and scrub your hands. There's an the soap in the tackle box, I think. Oh, I haven't touched it, and if I had, it wouldn't matter. Not much. You'll swell up like a poison pup and itch like you're on fire. Not me. Why, when we were little kids, I used to hide in the poison ivy when we played hide-and-seek. I'm immune. Well, I'm not. Come on, let's get out of here by the path. Well, it was an idea anyway. Sure. Look, Alan, if, you, if you've got your heart set on wood roses, go ahead and order them. Well, I wouldn't want to if you don't approve, dear. And I haven't definitely discarded the potted tulips. Pop, what do you see what's on the other side of that big hill? Hi, Mom. Hi. If it's a triple feature movie house, I'll give you the admission. No, this is something much better. Come on. Well, well what is it? I can't describe it. I've got to show you. Pat, I've paid scarcely any attention to your mother all Why, day. Why, I'm I... having a fine time, dear. You said it would be restful, and it is. Uh, sure, but you I... You Pat, run along. I saw the cutest little farmhouse over the knoll, and I think I'll just wander over. Why? Antiques. Sometimes you can pick up the darlingest things for practically nothing. Now, honey, last time it cost me 40 bucks for a chair that breaks your back. Well, I don't like the chair either, but it was such a bargain. Come on, Pop. I can ask your advice while we're climbing the hill. <laughs> any holidays next week, are there? No. No, Pat. How much farther? Well, not much. And you wouldn't want me to skip school a day, would you? No. This is the steepest hill they ever made. But well, where do you see on the other side? Just what I needed. It can't be a nickel-plated hot rod, and yet... There we are. Is that nothing? I'd say so. A field full of stones. Sure. Mr. Harris is going to send for ten tons of this junk to finish his house at $30 a ton. Me and Bill can rent a truck and haul him in and make a big profit of 12 bucks a ton. That's a mighty fine idea. But they don't belong to you. Sure they do. I talked to the guy who owns the field. He'll lend me a horse and a stone boat and give me five bucks for clearing it. Doggone, Pat, your mother thinks you're normal. But you aren't. 
You're a genius. Well, sure. The only thing is, I promised to get the job finished by next Saturday, and Bill isn't here today. Yes? And as long as there aren't any holidays, and you won't let me and Bill skip school... I can't exactly answer for Bill's father, but I think I know what he'd say. Well, so do I. So, uh, hadn't you and me better start piling them up right now? Pat, I, uh... Well, well... All right, son. I'm with you. Swell, Pop. It won't be much work. They're all nice big ones. Good exercise, right, Pop? Oh, uh, sure. This will get me in swell shape for football. Hey, get me in swell shape for a month in bed. Okay, up a couple yards, Bernie. You bet, Pat. Get up, Nashua. Well, that's enough. was a swell horse. I'm not a bit of scared of him. Uh, that's good. We like you, Woody. I rode a real grown horse all afternoon. Will he ever be jealous? Well, get with it, Pop. I'm picking up two to your one. Oh, but I'm only training for a little dinner dance. <clears throat> Boy, I'll clear 50 or 60 bucks on this deal. I'll spend that much for liniment. Hey, when we finish here, can we go back and catch some more fish? I don't know, son. Uh, it may be rather late. Yeah. I had to throw one more back, too. Too small? No, he was way too big. He'd have been tough. No. Ahead again, Bernie. Okay, get up, Nashville. Get up! Uh, uh, my missus thought you might like to have a little cold lemonade. I sure would, Mr. McDermott. It's good. The shade's good. Feels mighty good to sit for a few minutes. Just a little more, Bernie. Get up, Nashua! <laughs> My missus and your missus seem to be hitting it off right fine. That's so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, both interested in flowers. Matter of fact, they was making a deal when I left. Oh? What kind of deal? Well, uh, your missus is going to bring out a rocking chair. It's a mate to a backbreaker that my missus has got. And she'll trade it for a lot of wood roses that are running over our back porch. I see. Uh, uh, some more lemonade? Yes, please. Far enough, Bernie. Oh, that's oh. Couple of nice youngsters you got there. Yeah, they're okay. They get along fine together, too. Don't often see that with brothers. Not too often, I guess. You know, I don't exactly feel right giving the older one only five dollars for clearing all that field stone. Well, don't you worry about Pat. He'll make out all right. Mm, you're lucky to have a boy like that. You know, most city kids... All they think about is going to the moving pictures and disturbing the peace with their blasted hot rail cars. And... Uh-huh. And you take the younger one. Ain't many sprouts that waste an afternoon of sitting up on top of an old plow horse. You know what he'll grow up to be? A jockey? No, sir. A thinker. I'll bet he decides what he wants and then goes after it. And I'll bet he gets it, too. Uh, Pop, Pat says you don't have to help us anymore. He's taking the last load over to the side, and that'll be it for next week. Good. <laughs> you did a fine job there, Sonny. Uh, Mr. McDermott, my brother's going to pay me for helping him today, and uh, uh, how much would you want for Nashua? Mattresses, lunch hamper, grill. Now careful you don't scratch my rocks, Pop. Pat, do we have to load the car with those rocks? Sure, I gotta have samples to show Mr. Harris. Me and Pop will toss them out as soon as we get home. Well, all right, but I need the car the first thing in the morning. Tackle box, poles, fish. Aren't you gonna clean my fish, Pop? When we get home. I couldn't look one in the eye right now. Dave, are you all right? You scarcely touched that lovely supper Mrs. McDermott prepared. It was awfully good and only five dollars for the four of us. I just wasn't very hungry. Boy, I was. I could have eaten a horse. Are we going to buy the horse, Pop, are we? What's the use, as long as you can come out and ride him whenever you want to? But I could charge the other kids 35 cents a ride and he'd be paid for in no time. You know, dear, Mr. McDermott might buy a car from you sometime, particularly if you bought the horse. Yeah, he might. Actually, it wouldn't be hard to make a stall for him in the garage. And if Bernie wanted to accept the responsibility... Camp chairs, coffee pot... How about it, Pop? Let's discuss it later, please. Boy, I never had such a swell day in my whole life. Oh, me neither. Aren't you glad we came, Pop? I hope so. Well, I guess we can pile in. Come on, Pat, sit in the back of the room. Sure, kid. 
Actually, dear, it was a very good idea to come out here today. It seemed like it at the time. I got just exactly what I wanted for the decorations. Wood roses. And they didn't cost you a cent. Only a chair I paid $40 for. Yes, but you hated the chair. I know. And I'll give you credit for one thing. You were certainly right about the weather. And our sense of values, too. Hey, let's come out here all the time, Pop. I'll say. This was the flimsiest. I'm rich. Next time you suggest a picnic, dear, watch us all jump. Next time I suggest a picnic, I'll... Ellen, would you mind driving home? Of course not, dear, but... Dave, is something wrong? Nothing much. I I'm just a little tired. And I itch! <laughs> This is Loretta Young again. The remarkable thing about a kind deed is that it can't be isolated. Just one little kind deed can start a whole chain reaction from one person to another, into circulation through the world, and even into an unending circulation of inspiration from one generation to another. Deeds of kindness need not be heroic. It's a kind deed just to be cheerful, anywhere, anytime, Sometimes it takes a lot of doing, like the sacrifice of any personal woes and worries, for instance. You know, home is really like a garden, where seeds are planted and grow in a climate which we can control. A home where parents tend this garden carefully, cheerfully, unselfishly, is a home where happy children receive the inspiration to become cheerful doers of kind deeds, too. Every home should be that sort of a breeding ground. And every home will be if we follow the daily practice of family prayer. Because with God's help, with God's blessing, that family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Outing, starring Jack Haley. Loretta Young was your hostess. Others in our cast were Gene Bates, Jeffrey Silver, Richard Beals, and Leo Curley. The script was written by Fran Van Hattersveld and directed for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when family theater will present Now You See Him, starring Bill Williams. Ricardo Montalban will be your host. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.